All right, so now we're going to take this uh, conceptual mass with different family types into the project and put some, we're just going to put some walls and roofs on it for right now. We'll do floors later. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and open a project, this AO3 site project, which we created in one of the previous. And what I want to do is I want to double clip, double check where this building pad is located. So I'm going to go to my east elevation. And I'm going to zoom in and you can see that the building pad is located on level two. And I'm just going to select the building pad and it's actually on level one with a height offset of 10 and I'd rather it be hosted to level two. So I'm going to select level two from the pull down over here in the properties dialog box and I'm going to change the offset to zero. All right, so now that building pad is in the same place, but just hosted to a level that makes more sense. All right, so I'm going to go back to my 3D view. And I haven't mentioned this before, but when you're opening different views in Revit, it actually opens them on top of each other. So if I type WT right now, I have not only my, cent my uh, conceptual mass, but my east elevation and my site, my 3D view open. So you want to be aware of that because it will really you know clog up your video card and, and slow your computer down if you have a bunch of them open. So I'm just going to maximize this 3D view and in your quick access toolbar you'll have close hidden windows and if you click on that it'll close all the windows that are behind that. So now if I WT you'll see I only have two windows open. Alright, so maximizing this. Now what I want to do is I want to load that family into this project. So to flip between screens, I'm going to do control tab. So I'm going control tab and it flips, um, cycles through the different open windows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go load into project. Okay, so I'm going to click on load in project. It's going to enable the show mass mode because we're loading a mass and it says, hey, that would be great if you could see it. And you're like, thank you very much. So you hit close and that thing comes stuck into your cursor, right? And you get a placement plane level, right? And then you can also rotate after, but we don't need to rotate. We actually want to place it on level two because that's where our building pad is. So go to this pull down and pick level two and you'll see that it'll come in and, and you just kind of want to snap it to that back corner right there. And it wants to place more of them, but we only want one. So I'm just going to hit escape twice and it's going to stop that. So, so now you see we have, and the mass is slightly transparent for reasons that you'll see in a minute. Um, so now we have this mass sort of situated on this building pad. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the mass. So left click on it. And you're going to see that in the options dialog box, you have the settings that we had before. So I'm going to pick the 30 by 30 by 30, right? And that's a little closer to the size of our pad. But we really do need to make that pad match the, um, the mass itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my site plan right here, or my site view. So double click on the site. And you'll be able to see the mass and the building pad below. And what we want to do is select the building pad. So I'm hovering over it until you see pad, pad one selected, left clicking. And then there's an edit boundary up here. So I'm just going to go to edit boundary. And it's going to allow me to have access to the boundary of that. So what I want to do is I actually want to align these lines to the, to the mass. So when the mass changes, the building pad updates. So there is an align command right here. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to pick the edge of the mass, right? And then I'm going to pick the edge of the corresponding part of the building pad. And that's going to give me a lock option. And I'm just going to go around and do that on each edge. until I have them all locked. Okay, and then I'm going to hit the big green check. And I'm going to go back to my 3D view here. And you're going to see now that that building pad has updated. Now, let's update our different 
are uh, to a different type. So if I have 30 by 30 selected, let's do 40 by 40 by 30. And you'll see that that building pad will now update to the exterior of that mask because we've put that locking constraint on it. So that's kind of fun to do. And it certainly is helpful when you're changing different sizes. All right, so let's put some walls on this guy. Okay, so you can actually attach walls to the face of this mass. So if you go to your architecture tab in the wall pull down, there is wall by face. Select wall by face and you get a type selector up here and you have a basic wall interior. We don't want that. So left click on that in that area and you can scroll and there are different wall types loaded. Let's just do exterior CMU insulated or how about CMU on metal stud? All right, so I'm going to left click on that. And then it's going to allow me to come in and pick different walls. You see how the walls are different faces? You see how those faces are highlighting? Now one thing you want to pay attention to is here's the level that it's hosted on, level 1. And we want it to be hosted on level 2 with the building pad. And then in this location line, it's going to do the finished face exterior is going to be the selection point. Um, let's do core face exterior. That, mm, well, I guess it doesn't. Yeah, let's do core face exterior. So that will put the stud wall um, at the exterior of that. So this de this determines what the face of the mass becomes. So. Let's go ahead and, and pick core face exterior. Now just go around and left click and it's going to place those walls on those edges. All right. So I'm just going to do it on those and actually I don't want that wall on that face, but I'll leave it there for right now. It's all right. Um, and once you're done with that, let's go to this type selector down here. And if you scroll down, there's a storefront option. So click on that storefront. And it's going to do a level two there. And now you can pick this guy. And it's going to put a storefront on there. Pick that guy. It's going to put a storefront on there. And then I'm just going to pick that guy to change it from that solid to the storefront. Now that storefront's a little tight, right? It's like a five by eight or something. So I'm going to go to edit type. And you're going to see that in the storefront, the maximum spacing is 5 feet. So I'm just going to make it 10 feet and 10 feet. And I'm going to make this maximum spacing as well. Click OK. And it's going to think for a minute, and it's going to update those to 10 foot by 10 foot divisions. All right. All right, so now we've got our walls. Now let's go ahead and put on our roof. So again, architecture. There's a roof pull down here, and we're going to do roof by face. And if you just pick that, you can change the roof type as well over here in the type selector. So, oh, how about steel truss insulation on metal deck? Okay. And once you have it selected, this is a little different than the wall. It doesn't just create it immediately. And then um, one thing that's important about the roof is the picked faces location. Face is top of roof, but I kind of want this to be the faces at the bottom of the roof. Okay. And let's see if it'll make both of them. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So create roof. Yeah, it doesn't want to make that. So let's just cancel that. <clears throat> We've got everything still selected correctly except for the bottom of roof. And if you pick that and then create roof, it'll create it and you create them separately. Create roof, it'll create them both separately. <clears throat> so now, if I pick these roofs, I can kind of, you know, give them an overhang a little bit. I'm not going to be overly exact with this. Right? Because you want to figure this is schematic design and you might come back and be more accurate with another kind of roof. Now this edge over here, you can use the align command to lock those two. So if I go to align, and I have to might have to tab to get that and align with that, that you can lock it. Now when I move both of these, one of these, they both move, which is nice. So we have this 
Ooh, that little eyebrow needs to come out. Make me happier. Okay, so now we have this guy set up. Now, unfortunately, we could... Let's go ahead and pull... We could pull this forward, but it's going to make another, you know, roof in there. So there's, there's some things that would need to be done, but keep in mind this is schematic. Now, let's say we want to take a look and see what another one of these versions looks like. So what I need to do is get a hold of that mass, and it's kind of hard to get to here. So I'm going to window across here and filter out. So there's a filter up here. If I go to filter, I can go to check none and just pick mass and click OK. And now it's selected that mass. <clears throat> and you see I have the option to do one of the other types. So let's do 30 by 70 by 40. And you'll see that that <clears throat> will update. You can see the mass is updated. If I pick that, <clears throat> if I pick one of the pick the wall and hover over the wall and tab select <clears throat> all those chained walls you see this update to face if I click on that it's going to think for a minute but then it's going to update all those walls to the new faces on the mass and then if I pick the two roofs and update to face it will update those as well right so you have, <clears throat> you have the ability to come in and make quick sort of schematic changes. Now one more thing I might also mention is that <clears throat> not only do you have access to those types that you made in the family editor, but you can come in and if I filter out everything but the mass again, and you go to edit type, you can duplicate and you can create your own version, right? So we could do a, a 50 by 50 by 50. Oops. Click OK. And then update the sizes, right? So that could be 50, that could be 50, and that could be 50. I'll leave the width set to 100. Click OK. And now we've got a brand new one right that has a new family type name and I can do the same thing I can update those those walls to face so it, it's saying some are slightly malformed but I'm not gonna worry about that update to face and now you've got a new newer version of that okay alright so that's just real quick version of um, walls by face. You can also do floors by face, but we'll, we'll do that later.